Enjoy a long look at this postcard from the collection of the Addison Historical Museum. Notice the sign, the buildings, the automobiles. At the bottom of the postcard, Adventureland is described as Chicago's million dollar amusement park. Actually, Adventureland wasn't in Chicago. It wasn't even in Addison, as many people think. Adventureland was located in unincorporated Bloomingdale Township at the northwest corner of Lake Street and Medina Road. However, many people identified with Addison because it had an Addison mailing address and because Addison was listed as its location whenever it was advertised. The park was originally known as Paul's Picnic Grove and later as Storybook Park or Storybook City, USA. It became Adventureland in 1961 when it was purchased by Durrell Everding, who also owned Santa's Village in East Dundee, Illinois. The original Paul's Picnic Grove was located on 24 acres at the northwest corner of Lake Street and Medina Road. There were two buildings on the property. A restaurant and a tavern were in one of the buildings. The other was a large hall for banquets and dancing. It was first owned by, and named after, a man named Paul Werner. In 1952, he sold it to John and Marie Spezio, who sold it to Richard Berry six years later. Richard Berry then built Storybook Park as an attraction for families with young children. It included live storybook characters, a live volcano, a lollipop train, and rides. Here we see storybook character Cinderella and her coach. Visitors to Storybook Park could meet Cinderella in person and see a pumpkin really disappear and turn into a beautiful carriage. Then they could ride with Cindy through the wooded forest to her prince's castle. Also at Storybook Park was the old woman's shoe from the nursery rhyme written and published in England in 1794. The giant shoe stood 20 feet high. Children would climb up a ladder to enter the shoe at the heel and then come sliding down a 14-foot slide out through the toe. This giant shoe can still be seen at a miniature golf course on Lake Street in Hanover Park. Storybook Park also had a doll house, which contained a collection of dolls from all over the world. After Durrell Everding purchased the property in 1961 and renamed it Adventureland, he focused on rides rather than amusement houses. Here we see children and adults enjoying a ride on the Candy Cane Express. Every amusement park must have a Ferris wheel. This one at Adventureland offered a view from dizzy heights. The hydraulic parachutes at Adventureland would swing out in space at breakneck speed as riders would go up and over for a spectacular ride with a fast-moving view of the park. A ride on the octopus was an unforgettable, action-packed experience and screaming fun. The Super Himalaya was a thrilling and breathtaking roller coaster imported from Germany. It operated at speeds of up to 50 miles per hour into a wild world of music and lights. Adventureland's Super Italian Bobs was described as the largest and most breathtaking, sensational, heart-pounding, and ear-splitting steel roller coaster in the world at that time. Up, up, and away on the Western Roundup. There was excitement galore as riders went higher and higher before starting on the 90-degree turn, leaving them breathless but ready to try again. There was a surprise a minute on the whip where riders braced themselves for the unexpected. A trip to Adventureland also provided the opportunity to drive your own bumper car, torpedo tub, or go-kart. Imported from Italy, the electric bumper cars were fun for the whole family. You could whiz around under a roof with a myriad of twinkling lights overhead. Here we see riders and viewers gearing up for some crashing, splashing fun. A trip under a bridge and around the winding track of Adventureland's go-kart roadway was a lot of fun on a summer afternoon. There were unexpected surprises at the Munich Hofbrau House, which was a mechanical funhouse imported from Germany for Adventureland. 
You never knew what was coming up next, but for sure it would be the ultimate fun. There were more than 50 rides and attractions at Adventureland, including a chance to get up close to tame animals like this adorable baby deer named Tammy. There were shaded picnic grounds with plenty of tables and free parking for 3,000 cars. The park was open every day from Memorial Day to Labor Day and advertised in the Chicago Tribune and on local radio station WLS. Dance bands and a one-price policy drew suburban and Chicago residents of all ages. During the peak of its season, 650,000 visitors came to Adventureland. The park closed in 1977, and the 43-acre property was annexed into the village of Bloomingdale seven years later. If you've enjoyed this trip back in time to Adventureland and you'd like to reminisce some more, visit the Addison Historical Museum. We are located at 135 Army Trail Boulevard in Addison and are open on Saturdays from 10 a.m. till 2 p.m.